Hello members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers, it's time for the highlighting phase. This is where we take your nice looking figures, which have been base coded and are pretty basic, and turn them into little mini works of art. And for doing that, you'll need a few things. Well, you don't need them, but it makes everything a lot easier. First thing is a decent brush. This one is a Series 7 Windsor & Newton Finest Sable. Uh, this particular one is double zero. Windsor & Newton Sable brushes are fantastic. Keep their point, and though they're more expensive, they're definitely worth the investment. Another thing that I find myself using because my eyesight is failing is one of these. It's called a head loop, and it goes around your head, and you stick in these lenses, and you can, if you have these on your head, you look really stupid, but you can really see the miniature nice and close up and it's a lot easier to paint. I won't put it in my head because I look dumb. So, let's start highlighting. Now, I'm not going to actually paint as I go here and the reason is this is quite fiddly work and it's very difficult to do with a camera above you and talking at the same time. But I'll just walk you through it. The first thing I did was highlight the black armour and that's with a lighter grey and you just edge highlight the bits of black to give it that highlight and make that pop a little bit. Now it may look incredibly small but as I said with a good brush and a head loop you'll find this quite easy. Uh, the next thing is you can see the white on the edges of the light grey to highlight all those white areas. Then I've put on some strips of yellow and done a black edge to that. Then there's a white dot where the eyes are, then some red over the top of that. And you can retouch the black around the edges if that gets messy. For the base, I have another video on doing bases, but this is my full back, very easy base style. I paint it in black, do a lighter grey on it, and then finally a white. And the grey and white, of course, are dry brushes. Dry brushing is just wiping most of the paint off your brush on a piece of paper towel and when your brush hardly has any paint on it you can wipe it over the base and the raised areas will pick up the colour. But it's just a matter of taking your time and doing all these little ed edge highlights. Once you've done a grey on the black you can also do a tiny bit more on really highlighted areas like knuckles and very high parts. What you're imagining is that the light is coming down from above and hitting the edges and they're the bits you want to highlight. So that's an enforcer figure. Let's have a look at a plague figure. Now since the last time we did the basic colours on this I put a red glaze over the flesh areas because I wanted it to be a bit more red and less pink. Um, the ones on the box are a more purpley colour but I just wanted a sort of red fleshy tone. This one let that dry and then started highlighting and that's just working up through flesh to ever more pinky colours and then I put little bits of bleach bone paint on the bits of bone and spikes that are sticking out highlighted the black shirt with grey and then a bit of brown highlighting on the pants and you can see in this figure there's a different colour brown when I did that pouch. You can mix and match your brown colours. Did these in black, a little dry brush of silver over the top, and Bob's your uncle. There he is. A bit of fine work on the face there, just pointed out, pointed out the teeth and the eyes. Gave me a sort of white staring zombie expression. A little bit of brown ink on the edge of the blade there the end of the blade and dry brush the base and there he is it's very quick and easy to do and remember you can do one layer of highlights and then another layer of an even lighter highlight to just build up that sense of depth now this guy needs a little bit more work I haven't done the cloak as yet and I think I should have put the cloak on before I started painting because I've got gaps there I might have to fill with a bit of green stuff and paint over again before I do the cloak but he's looking good and nice fine detail with the face again with the aid of the magnifying head loop. And here we have an absolutely classic blending challenge, a cloak. So many of your fantasy and sci-fi figures will have cloaks. 
you'll soon get used to highlighting them. So our base color is a black, that's as dark as we're going to go obviously, so we're just going to lighten it up to a lighter gray. So get some black, mix with a bit of white, a bit of water, and then just freehand strokes over the lighter parts, um, the raised areas I should say. I can be quite rough at this stage because it's still dark and depending on the effect that you want you can do this as roughly or as finely as you like. This is our first stage. So we've left the black only in the deepest creases of the cloak. Remember to let it dry between your different colours unless you're doing a wet blending technique otherwise you may spoil the paint that you've put on already. So blending a bit more white in there, always remembering to thin the paint a bit with water. And this is a little bit tricky to do because I've got a camera hovering over me, but These earlier blends I can do roughly and then clean up later. And you can always go back to the darker colour if you feel you've gone too far and it's not blending in nicely. I went to a smaller brush and then just went up through the greys. You can see I've just put teeny bits of white right on the tips of the cloak a teeny bit there, just on the edges, but apart from that it's just shading up through the greys. In some cases blending it on the actual figure while the paint was still wet. You don't have, be, don't have to be too precise, just get that effect. Remember the light is coming down from above and it's right on the top edges where the light is the lightest. And we're done with the Enforcer Captain. Here's one of the stage two plague creatures, all finished. You can see I've gone with my own colour scheme there. I've made the bony areas a very bone colour and the fleshy areas a very flesh colour. Um, I didn't really like the purple effect that they had in the um, rule book and in the photographs, so I went with this instead. And you can paint your plague creatures or any of your creatures any colour you like. What I've done with the bone is um, a bone colour, base colour, and then washed with a dark brown, and then highlighted up through a lighter bone, and even right up to a white. Now beginners tend to be daunted by the whole idea of highlighting. Um, one thing to remember is that you really don't have to have a perfect transition between your darker tones and your lighter tones as you highlight up. Remember these are small figures and you see them from a distance, and from a distance your eye blends the colours together. You're not uh, putting these on display so they have to have perfect blends. So put on um, a base colour, shade it with a wash, probably highlight a bit with the original base colour and then work up to the lightest tone, probably in only two stages. So with this we've got a basic bleached bone colour, it's washed with a dark brown, then I put on a bit more of the bleached bone colour and then a lighter one, and then a few little dabs of white on the most pointy out bits. Pointy out bits? Yeah, that'll do. There are certain areas which can always do with a bit of a very light color, and they're places like the knees and elbows and little dots of white on the knuckles, bring those out. And on the face, you're doing the brow above the eyes, the nose, the chin, all the bits that catch the lightest light. But again, don't worry too much about blend, blending them together. You'll be seeing them from a distance. Here's our stage one plague guy, a big bad meanie in the box. 
And you can see here another technique I use for base coating sometimes, and that's to actually blend the colours together while they're wet. I didn't want clearly demarcated areas between the bone and the flesh here because he's mutating between them. So what I used is a bone colour and a flesh colour and mixed them on the figure itself while they were both still wet. And that gives me a nice graduated colour between the two. Now I can go back and highlight this until it's finished. And here's the final figure. It's the Plague Stage 1 creature. And this is highlighted in a lot of detail with uh, very light and white highlights. And on the fleshy areas, I've done little dots of white here and there to give it the sort of glistening, fleshy feeling. Yeah, horrible. Um, but it's just um, going over it and over it with very, very small highlights and bringing all that lovely detail to the fore. Um, for his hands, I thought it's time to add a bit of blood and gore because he looks like the kind of guy who rips people from limb from limb. So um, I've used a blood mix there and here it is here. And this is great for glooping on and splashing and spraying all over your bloody figures. And it's made from a mixture of Tamiya acrylic paint, a clear red, which is a lovely blood type uh, paint and it's slightly glutinous so it's just perfect. And I mixed it with a bit of brown ink. Mix that up and it makes a great blood. Um, and it's got that gloopy texture that is just lovely. So there he is. And we've done it. We've finally done all the figures. So I'll spray them with varnish and everything will be ready for playing with on the tabletop. Yay! Well, there we have it, folks. Uh, all the figures are painted. I've got everyone here except for the large stage one plague miniature, which I'm going to work on a little bit further. Um, but I've stuck them all to this piece of cardboard with blue tack and then I will varnish them. Yes, the wonderful phase where you get to varnish all your hard work and preserve it forever. Um, I use a semi-gloss varnish. You can use a matte semi-gloss or a gloss varnish. Usually the glossier the varnish is, the more hard wearing it is. So I go for a middle road. Um, so, let's varnish these and now let's move on to the buildings!